You know, the presence of God should be the most comfortable place for you. Amen. If it's not, well, it's not a comfortable place for the things that are in you then. <laughs> Whew. Glory. In verse 7. Don't be what? Oh, hallelujah. But Satan's greatest weapon? Deception in his power is fear. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he's going to also reap. Boy, there's a lot of reaping going to be happening here shortly. Whoo wee. For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. That's a curse. Because corruption can't come without a curse. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So let us not grow weary while doing good. In other words, while you're on course, you're on line, you're in divine order, priorities are set. For in due season we will reap if we don't lose heart or if we don't get misled. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to the, those of the household of faith. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised or brought under religion, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Hmm. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Everyone say, the world. Is crucified, is crucified to me, to me. And, I to and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But I what? A new creation. A new creation means new life. New life. So in this, what we just spoke about, there's a law of death. This is a spiritual law. And there's a law of life. There's two laws here. One leads to life, one leads to death. In Romans chapter 8, Romans 8, in verse 1, We are talking about the laws of life today. It is a law of life. There is a law. That means there's a rule. There's requirements. There's a law. Laws are for protection. Amen? They're to keep us in line. In Romans 8, verse 1, let's speak it. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Again, according to the flesh is according to the law of death. According to the Spirit is according to the law of life. It says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in his flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. And what is that righteous requirement? What is the price we pay? Cooperation. Amen. So the re Righteous requirement is cooperation. And it says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, their past, themselves, prosperity. I mean, there's nothing wrong with prosperity, but it's a priority to them because their priorities are out of order. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, so they're heaven-bound. Many are earthly-bound. It says in verse 6, for to be carnally or physically or minded is what? Is what? Death. death. That means they're living according to the law of death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So again, there is a law of life and there is a law of death. And it says then, and because of the, the carnal mind is enmity against God, so your old man mind is against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, which is the law of life, nor indeed can it be. So your old man, there is no salvation for your old man. It can never be redeemed. Only your new man. Mm. Again, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So your mind can never be converted. You need a new mind. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> so then those who are in the flesh, in the old man, in the old conduct, cannot please God. There is a law of life and there is a law of death. The law of death is under the old birth. The law of life is under the new birth. Now, can you step out of the new birth? Yes. yes. Yeah. People sell their birthrights for the things of the world. Look at how many have sold their birthrights for fame and fortune. In 2 Corinthians 5. Law of life, something we've heard multiple times. Obviously, the Holy Spirit is bringing something to remembrance for a purpose. <clears throat> In verse 17, therefore, where there means therefore, therefore is always associated with an if you do this. If you cooperate, amen, if you do this, God will do that. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, amen, so that means they're cooperating according to the law of life. He is a what? He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Why? Because they're fulfilling the law. So every day you and I must maintain a life that fulfills the law of life by living and living in the new creation and being led by the spirit of life so that the old man is crucified with the old life of death. That takes cooperation. Is everybody okay? Next verse 18. Now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and have given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors. Everyone say, I'm an ambassador. Amen. For Christ, as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, the new creation is the new birth with a new law that's given to us so that we can maintain new birth. Amen? In 1 John chapter 5.
law of life. <clears throat> First John chapter five, verse eighteen. See, there's a lot of people, again, that know the truth but can't practice the truth. And the purpose of that is because they're not connecting. They're not connecting to the new life. And that's where you and I got to connect every day. That's why we get refreshed. That's why many who fall out of assembling usually begin to backslide. And even those who are assembling, if they're not connecting, they backslide. Amen? So the whole arena here for me and you is to constantly connect. And we're connecting to the tree of life, the river of life, the presence of life, the giver of life, and the keeper of life. We reconnect every day. It says, verse 18, For we know that whoever is born of God does not, what? Sin, and sin is the presence of evil. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, keeps himself connected. Amen? Keeps himself away from associations that would bring terrible thoughts. Protects himself for the things he hears and sees and receives. Keeps himself under the law of life. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Let me tell you again something that is so powerful to me. The devil cannot touch the presence of God. He can't touch it. But he tries to get a message through it. If you get a message through it to you and you agree with it, you open the door and invite him in. But he cannot touch the presence of God, and if you're covered by the presence of God, walking in the presence of God, the devil has nothing on you. Now, if you're in that condition where you're walking in the presence of God and you're being led by the Spirit of God, the old man is crucified. Amen. He's got no power over you. He can grumble and complain, but it will not affect you. Because he is in you is greater than he who was in you. Amen. He's now behind you, not in front of you. See, what the enemy likes to do is get us in the place where the old man becomes in front of us and a new man is now behind. It's reversal. Switched authority. Now we're being led by the old man instead of the new man. And then the old man will lead... I know this may be a little bit hard. The new man right to hell. That's his job. The old man wants to lead the new man right to hell. Is everybody okay? Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Again, keep ourselves under the law of life. The world is under the law of death. And of course, the law of death is eternal separation from the Creator. In Psalm 19. <clears throat> Living according to the flesh means the old man's leading them. Amen. Not the new man. And to slap the hell out of the old man and get him behind you. 
make room for heaven. Amen? <laughs> Believe me, I find myself sometimes slapping myself. <laughs> Dummy. Get behind me. <laughs> Psalm 19. Verse 7. So we have the law of life. In here he expresses to us, it says in verse 7, what? The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. It's perfect. And what does it do? It converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. How many of you know that a joyful heart is good medicine? A miserable heart is death to self. Your body begins to eat itself. It eats its immune system. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Come on, read it with me. Yea, then much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is what? Warned. This is a warning. And in keeping them, there is what? There's great reward. So we are warned. It is the law of life is perfect. It's his testimony, statutes, commands, judgments. We're warned. In keeping all of these, we'll have victory. Slip from one of them. And opens the door. Romans 6. Law of life. Where there is a law of life, there is a law of death. Remember, sin is the presence of evil. We are constantly bombarded. Trying to get slipped up, snared. In verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly what? Not. Not. Well, that just nullifies the once saved, always saved, doesn't it? <laughs> shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No way. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk and the newness of life, which is the law of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. I love that verse. He who has died to what? Yourself. Verse 8. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also what? Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lust. Very powerful. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness, to sin, but present your, 
yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law of death, but you are under the law of grace or the law of life. Amen? Now, remember, grace is God's plan, isn't it? So that means that in God's plan, and it's his plan to escape, isn't it? It's his plan to escape hell. <laughs> it's his plan to escape deception and the wrath of God. It's his plan to escape. So by cooperating again with his plan, we fall under the law of life. By not cooperating with his plan, we fall under the law of death. Amen? Is everybody okay? We are died, we, we died, we are buried, we are crucified in the likeness of a death, removing the presence of evil and death, breaking their power of influence, of worldly lusts, and breaking the power of the law of death. And now we're walking into the law of life where there is guidance. <clears throat> there is rules of protection. There is submission. And all of this is to the keeper of the law and the rules of life known as the Holy Spirit. He is the keeper. He is the one who guides me and you. He's the one who leads us to all truth. In Titus 3. So you think it's important that we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Titus 3. In verse 1, it says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey and to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Verse 3, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men, but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Again, in this, we see that the regeneration and renewing and washing the, of the, <clears throat> is the keeper of the law, and the keeper of the law is the Holy Spirit. Where there is a new law, there is a new covenant. A new law does not come without first a new covenant. A new covenant is established by blood. Blood. Then the laws are put in. First, there must be a blood sacrifice as a covenant. That's why the blood always goes before the spirit. It's associated with covenant. That's why when you repent, covenant is always reestablished. And it allows the spirit of regeneration to come. The renewing, the washing to come. That you are now brought from the life of death, the law of life of death, to the law of life. Or the law of death, yeah. From the law of death to the law of life. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31. Oh, happy days. Are you going through regeneration? Yes. Even while you're sleeping. Jeremiah 31. As long as you're in a place of cooperation, it's happening. 
But if you're not in a place of cooperation, you're in a woe place. Whoa. 3131. Whoa, W O E, without eternity. 3131. Behold, the days are what? Are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? Law in their minds. What law is this? The law of life. And I'll write it in their hearts. And I'll be their God and they shall be my people. Powerful. No more shall every man teach his neighbor. Every man his brother say, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Where there's a new covenant, there's a new law. And that... And where there's that new law, there's that new re regeneration by the Holy Spirit, who is the keeper of the law of life in our body. Mm. Changing us, constantly changing us until there is no sin power. Until there is no disease power. Until there is no fear power which is a part of the law of death. Until the new life, the new law, the new covenant, and the new power of resurrection has full reign in me and you. Ephesians 4. Law of life. Verse 17. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. If they're being alienated from the life of God, they're also being alienated from the law of life. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, <clears throat> who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanness with greediness. So they're living from their past, not the future. But you have not learned Christ. You've not learned the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off. You put off. You put off because the power that's in you is greater. So you and I are to put off. Concerning your former conduct, the old man, the one that is under the law of death, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and renewing in the spirit of our mind that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in what? True righteousness and holiness. True righteousness and holiness. So you and I are to be putting on the new man created, regenerated by the keeper of the Holy Spirit in the law of life, producing righteousness and holiness. Romans 8. In verse 13. <clears throat> Who's the keeper of the law of life? Holy Spirit. It 
says that he will convict us, he will guide us to all truth, he'll tell us things to come. If we're listening, or if we're hearing. Verse 13, Romans 8, for if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die, because you're living according to the old man, aren't you? Amen? Who's under the law of death. But if by the Spirit you put to death the influence, the deeds of the body, you will live or the influence in the deeds of the old man because your old man is now your flesh. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God or live under the law of life, these are called sons of God. For you did not receive the Spirit again of bondage, to what? To fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. It says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, there's that if again, if you'll cooperate, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Look at verse 18. For I consider the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen, there isn't anybody that's not going through it. Everybody goes through it. Welcome to the earth. Amen? It's a go-through. It's a drive-through. Fly-through. But we're going through. This is not our home. But those who live according to the flesh make it their home. Those who live according to the Spirit are just travelers through. That's the difference. Our citizen is in here. It's in heaven, eternally bound. Amen? So he says, so that I consider that the suffering of this present time isn't going to, you know, forget it. It's not going to compare to what is going to be revealed in me and through me and who I truly am because one day I'm going to shed all of this and become a butterfly. <laughs> it was an inside joke with my wife <laughs> little butterfly anyways verse 19 for the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption, which is under the law of death, into the glorious liberty of the children of God, who are now under the law of life. So in other words, what you and I are going to do, what we touch can change. Every area. What you touch can change. Take something out of death and turn it into life. Does everybody get that? Why? Because we walk in resurrection power. We're still being regenerated constantly. The keeper of eternal life, presence, and the glory of God, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the anointing, lives in me and you. Amen. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also... We have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. We're waiting to shed this. Sometimes we groan. Sometimes we're struggling, don't even realize we're struggling. And we're struggling trying to find out what we're struggling with. When actually you're just struggling with yourself. You just want to be more clothed with the glory. Amen? Oh, happy days. In 2 Corinthians 6, So we're being regenerated into his image and likeness every day. In verse 14, so he warns us and he, and he tells us here, man, protect yourself before you fall back under the law of death. Don't be unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with? Lawlessness. And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? 
And what agreement has the temple of God with? Idols. How many of y'all know a lot of people make money their idol? Or their materialism. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. If they do what? If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is unclean, and I'll receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you will be my sons and my daughters. Why? Because you'll be led by the Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear, reverence, and honor and respect to God. So we're to come out from the law of death and those who associated and live according to the law of death. We're to come out from among them. In John 10. And I'll tell you what, God is really preparing us for what's getting ready to happen. John 10, verse 1. Let's speak it. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. What is this door? It's the eternal port. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. See, one of the things the powers of darkness do is they open up ports. So they have to shed a lot of blood to open up a dimensional port so they can come in and out. They do a lot of witchcraft, a lot of bloodshed, human bloodshed, sacrifices to open up dimensional ports. So God was warning them, you think you're going to enter up and make it through your own ports? He's the only port. Even Nimrod tried to create his own port. Amen? He built a tower trying to get to heaven, building his own port. Symbolic to what they do now. So where there's much bloodshed, they can open up a dimensional port. And they access. Verse 2. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Every once in a while, you will hear your name. You may not hear it every single day, but every once in a while, your name will come. And it will call you. You could be just sitting there, you could be whatever, and all of a sudden your name will, you'll hear him say your name. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. Now, do you hear this? When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep do what? Follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. In other words, they don't accept the voice of the stranger. You should know the voice of the stranger. You know it by its fruit. Amen? Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Life abundantly by giving us a new covenant with a new law and rules to follow all the way home. He not only gave us empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He said, I didn't come to bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword. That's the anointing. Mark 8, we'll close here.
Mark 8. <clears throat> Verse 34. Mark 8, 34. And Jesus, when he called the people to himself, he called the people with his disciples also. And he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny him so first part of the law. Deny yourself. Let him deny himself, pick up his cross, the sword, and follow. Second part of the law. And to follow me is the third part of the law. You cannot fulfill the law of life without fulfilling these three. Does everybody get it? The Holy Spirit is the keeper of the law of life who convicts us so we deny ourselves. He encourages us to fight and he requires us to follow. Amen. Forever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and riches and fame and homes and cars and jewelry and everything else and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Forever is ashamed of me, says the Lord, and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Again, deny self, pick up cross and follow, fight and follow. So you and I must live a constant life of believing, receiving, and executing. Again, it was a refreshing today so that we get an understanding. We must be refreshed in certain areas. We want to maintain and cooperate by living under the new law of life, by a new covenant. And the keeper is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word today. And we welcome the Holy Spirit to continue to lead us, guide us, convict us, slap us in the head, kick us in the butt, whatever you got to do to keep us on course, avoiding, avoiding the law of death and maintaining the law of life that we may be sons and daughters that are pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.